Okay, this video is on 853. Um, it's a clarification of how to deal with these loads. Okay, I'm assuming you were able to determine what your moments would be, what all your forces would be at this point. Um, now let's talk about how to analyze it if you're going to do like stress analysis. <clears throat> let's start with each one of these. Okay, so what I've done is I've I've drawn it the way it's caused, uh, the way each of these forces cause about this element here. So as a result of th uh, this one here being 100, 100 times 8 caused it to bend this way, so I show it going this way. So I'm going to work through each one of these and hopefully it's going to explain. I'll start with the 75 first. So if I'm going to do the 75, I'm going to talk about all the different points. We're going to do, let this be point 1, We'll let this be point 2, we'll let this be point 3, and let this be point 4. We're going to start at 1 and work our way around and talk about what's going to happen here. If, <clears throat> I'm going to write these all down, if I'm going to do moments, of the normal, or excuse me, what the, uh, ah, excuse me, what the stress, normal stress is going to be at 1, what the normal stress is going to be at 2, what the normal stress is going to be at 3, and then what the normal stress is going to be at 4. We're going to work through each one of these carefully. Okay, in each one of these positions, you have the 75 coming in. In each one of these, you're going to have 75 divided by that cross-sectional area in every single one of these. And you're going to make that positive, no matter where the position is. And again, I'm not going to go through and calculate area or anything like that. This is conceptual. And each one of these will be positive, 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 and positive. And the reason being is because the 75 is causing a tension, tension load across this entire cross-sectional area. All right. Now, let's talk about what would happen if you're going to deal with... So we'll mark these off. We've got the 75 done. <clears throat> All right. So now let's go to... Let's go to the 800. We'll talk about bending. We'll get, we'll get into shear in just a second. If I'm going to do the 800, then the 800 here is going around this axis here. 800 cannot cause any stress at 2 or 4 because it has no C value. Because remember, what you're dealing with here when you have a moment is, is you're basically it's MC over I. Yes, across this, you have an M. You have a moment inertia, but you have no C value. So 800 cannot cause anything anywhere along this axis. I can pick other points. Like, for example, if I picked a point here, then my C value would be the distance from here to here. Okay, so what you would do here would be, if 800 is bending this way, it's going to cause uh, tension in this segment, and then this segment, and then compression here, and compression here, anywhere in here this is going to cause it. So if I'm going to find the stress at 1, the first thing I'm going to do is go back here. I'm going to do plus 8, 800 times the C value. The C value is going to be from here to here. So I'm going to put, let me write that a little better. You can't quite read that. Time my C value over my I. Okay, and then if you want to, you can put this in here. There's no reason to, but you can put 800 times zero because there's no C value over I. And it doesn't matter whether it's plus or negative because it doesn't doesn't do anything. But now, oops, go back to three. I'm sorry. No, it does matter in three. I got this wrong. I mean, I was doing this in order. I was doing this too fast. Come back here. I'll drop down to number four. And number four would be place 800 times zero over I. Okay, when I come to this one, as we said, it's causing compression. It's forcing back in. It's squishing material all through here. So that would be minus 800 times C over I. Okay, so now we are done with this one. Now what we could do is <clears throat> we could look at the 640. Now so I'm going to take out these values here. Okay, 
and we would say, what is the 640 doing? It's bending it away. So it's causing tension here, tension here, compression here, and compression here. Because again, it's just rotating around. It's trying to pull it away from here, it's trying to smash it into here. So what if I do that, I would do almost the same thing, except now, at number one, I ha it does cannot cause any stress. It has no C value. So I can do 640 times zero over I. When I go to number two, I'm going to do plus 640 times my C value, which in this case is going to be a radius, divided by I. And the reason it's positive because I got tension, tension. I come to number three, I do plus 640 times zero over I. I come to number four, I go minus 640 times C over I. Again, it's causing compression, compression. So now you're done with this moment here. <clears throat> so if you're doing just your your normal stresses, this you're done. This, these, is all, these are all your values. Everything else is causing shear or torque or shear stress. Okay. So you're done with that. Now, I'm going to grab all these. I'm going to move these out of the way so we got a little bit of room to talk about how to do the shear. Maybe. Move this down. Let's get this out of your way one more time. I don't want to do that. All right, there we go. Need more room than that. Down a little bit further. Uh, we should be good to go here. All right, so now let's talk about what's ha taking place in the 100. If I'm going to do the 100, the 100 is trying to shear everything across this area here. So let's talk about how you're going to do that. If the 100 is pushing or causing a shear, and I'm going to draw it going across here like this. I get no shear stress at, well, at this point here. I get no shear stress at this point here. I get maximum shear stress at 2 and 4. And the reason being is because I cannot calculate my value of Q because the equation for shear is VQ over IT. Okay. If, for example, on a test you're asked what is the shear stress here, then what you would have to do, and again this would be a little bit harder, is you would have to draw your line straight down to here. You'd have to find all this area into here. You would take that area, you multiply it by the moment arm from here to here. That's your Q value. Again, let's hope you don't get a problem like that. But again, if I'm going to do number one, then I could say uh, the shear as a result of the 100 at number one is going to be zero. And it's, it's going to be zero because Q is equal to zero. If I'm going to find the shear of 100 at the two, position two, then I can do this problem. I will take the 100, I will multiply it by the Q. Now the Q value, and I'm going to back off of this, but it's going to be all this area in here. You're going to have to calculate and then multiply it by the distance from here to here. That's going to be your Q value. Or you can do this side. It makes no difference whatsoever because it's symmetrical. But you do not do the whole area. You do just the area from the outer fiber to where you want to find the uh, shear stress. All right, so now let's back out of that one. So again, I would calculate my Q value. I would multiply it and divide it by the entire moment of inertia. And then your thickness is going to be all the way across here. The diameter is going to be your thickness. I would put that in and I, I'd get the same I'd get that. Now the shear at four is going to be the same thing. Okay, now if you're going to find the shear at three, again you have no Q value. This cannot cause shear at three. So now we are done with the one hundred. Now, if I want to do, um, find out what's causing, you know, what this is causing. Let's, I didn't put a load on that, but that was the 80. Okay, now I've got to get rid of this. 
I draw my 80 coming down. Oops, get the 80. And it's the same type of situation. If I have 80 coming down, 80 cannot cause any shear here or here because, again, I cannot get any Q value. However, I can get a shear at 1 at 3. To find that, I need to take this whole area here above, and I'll do it in red. This will be my Q value. I'm going to calculate this area here, multiply it by the distance from here to here is my moment arm. That's going to be my Q. So I can find the shear he at here and here as a result of the 80. So the 80 can only cause shear here and here or anywhere above this line, anywhere below this line, but it cannot cause shear at 1 or 3. And that's all you're going to do on that one. <clears throat> okay, so far so good. All right, so now back out of that. All right, now, if we're going to do the um, the torque as a result of torque, your torque is going to go this way here. Like this. Okay, so it's trying, it's trying to shear everything across. So if I'm going to find the shear values here, then I can do that because the, the torque or the shear is equal to the um, torque times the distance from the axis, usually TC over J, something like that. And usually it's going to be, it's just a value. So if I'm going to, it's going to be uh, the, uh, excuse me, the torque divided by the polar moment measure times C. Now C is going to be the distance from here to the fiber. This torque is going to cause a shear anywhere here, 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 and here. But it's just, the thing is, it's going to cause different distances. It's going to cause a shear to go this way. It's going to cause a shear to go this way. It's going to cause a shear to go across here and to go across here. All right? And really, that's it. I mean, you just go through everything very carefully. Um, if you analyze this, you're not going to have any problems. All right, I hope that video, I hope this little video helped you understand how to set these up and how to calculate uh, your stresses.